Good morning guys and welcome to our channel Probably Lost and welcome to Budapest. If you've been following our channel for a while then you know that we've been here before but we didn't get a chance to film. And so today we wanted to do something super special for Budapest and we're doing Budapest on a budget. Like a really tight budget. <laughs> We're gonna attempt to show you how to do Budapest on a budget for $25 each, or $50 total. We're still gonna stick to our 10 spots, but instead of cool restaurants and museum tours, we're gonna be sticking to the budget-friendly options. I honestly have no idea if we're gonna be able to do this or not. Not everything works out, guys. But we're gonna try, so let's go. Per usual, we are stopping at a cool coffee spot called Espresso Embassy. It gets that name because it is situated directly next to the Montenegro Embassy. It also has this cellar type look to it, which I don't know why, but makes me feel like I'm getting some super secret fancy type of coffee. All right, Hannah started off strong with a shot of espresso. I got the filtered coffee. Both of them were 1600 Hungarian forints, which is $3.90. I feel like we're starting off on a strong note. However, prices have risen here since we last came, so this might be a little difficult. Just a couple short blocks away from Espresso Embassy is a must-see church called St. Stephen's Basilica. Now, I know I say that about just about every church that we see, but this is the biggest church in Hungary, according to Google. So, that means it warrants the must-see title, right? Just having coffee with my pal. Admission into the church is 1,200 Hungarian forint each, so I'm going to go in, but I'll make it up to hand a little bit later when we do another thing that's about the same price. This church is named after St. Stephen, who was the first king of Hungary. And another thing about him, one of his hands is mummified and on display in a case inside the church. I'm guessing a, a sign of respect or appreciation for him and who he was and what he did, but it's a little crazy to see. <laughs> The church was beautiful. I believe it. I can't wait to edit it and see it. But now we're gonna go to a couple other places on the Danube River that are free. When we first arrived in Budapest back in February, neither one of us really had any understanding of the history that's taken place here. Now, I'm not gonna go too much into the nitty gritty of the historical moments that have shaped Budapest into what it is, but one that is memorialized in probably the most poignant way possible are the Shoes on the Danube Bank Memorial. This memorial isn't massive in structure, but due to the crowds that come to see it, it's still a bit hard to miss. This memorial was made back in 2005 to mark the site where fascist Arrow Cross militiamen lined up a group of local Jewish people, made them remove their shoes, and shot them. The bodies fell into the river where they drifted off, leaving only the pairs of shoes behind. Personally, this is the most sobering memorial that I've ever come across, and I know this topic is grim, but I felt like I wouldn't have been able to show Budapest properly without taking you to see this. On a bit of a lighter note, there is a building right next to the shoes on the Danube Bank that is extremely important to the country of Hungary and is the most beautiful building I have seen since we've arrived in Europe, without question. Both the shoes on the Danube and the Parliament Building are free to walk around, so we're not spending any money on these, although you can book a tour for the Parliament Building. It's 20 euros for non-EU citizens and 10 euros for EU citizens, so we're just going to admire from that side. All right guys, one of the most popular things to do here is to take a Danube River cruise. So that's what we're gonna do, kind of. You see, rather than spend the 20 euros that it is to give a guided tour along the banks of the Danube, we're gonna take the commuter ferry. Little hack there. We're gonna take it from the Marger Bridge down to the Liberty Bridge. This way we kind of get the same sort of experience without the guided tour and without the added expense. Well guys, not everything works out the way we planned. No way that we'd ever known that. Online it says that it's running. It says that it runs at like 12.15. We're, so we're like eight minutes early, but unfortunately it looks like it's been suspended. So we're just gonna have to probably walk. We're definitely bummed that we're not gonna be able to do the cheap Danube River cruise, but on the plus side, that frees us up a few extra dollars. Well, we made it. If you watch this vlog and you decide that you want to do Budapest on a budget and you are lucky enough to be here not on a holiday weekend and take the ferry, let us know how it is down in the comments below because this walk was no joke. We are at our lunch spot. No fancy or cool restaurant this time. Instead, we are at Central Market Hall. This is a massive market in the center of town located in a building that dates back to the late 1800s. Now, I've heard some pretty wild things about shopping and eating in here, and while we've not experienced these personally, supposedly eating lunch here can be a bit difficult. Dessert for lunch? Anybody? 
it's so much busier than it was when we were here in February. Like, we had this place all to ourselves, and now everyone is here. The goal is to keep this meal cheap, cheap. Five dollars total, cheap, cheap. I have no idea if that's possible, but we're gonna try. We're splitting a lango. I'm probably saying that wrong. It's basically a fried puff pastry with cheese. And usually it's served with sour cream too, but it was more expensive to get sour cream and cheese. So we just got cheese, cause cheese. So I've seen people fold it or just eat it like this. I'm just gonna go like this. It tastes like um, the puff pastry. Puff. Peximini. Peximati. That's what it tastes like, but with cheese literally bit a hunk out of the paper. <laughs> we met some friends. Hello. Hey. Fellow travel vloggers, Chrissy and Steve. This is a big moment for us because we literally never see anybody that does this. And they said the same thing, they don't yeah. really ever see any travel vloggers, yeah, so. Yeah, this is the first time in six, seven months that we've met anyone from the travel vlogging community, so super excited. So subscribe and like their videos because they're friendly and that's what matters. Now, we are leaving our lunch spot and our lovely new friends, and we're gonna continue this day under budget. I have confidence. We're doing well so far. We've had some curveballs, but we adapt and we overcome. We got That's this. That's what we do. We got this. So far today, we've spent all of our time on the east side of the Danube River. So we've just crossed Elizabeth Bridge to the west side of the bridge. This side is called Buda, as well as the northwest side, I believe, is called Obuda. They combined along with the east side of the Danube River, which is called Pest, and they created Budapest. I think that was in like the 1930s. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you're from Budapest, I hope I'm not butchering this. Either way, we're on the Buddha side to check out Buddha Castle and the two other really cool places before we go to dinner tonight. Let's go. The Buddha side of the city is considered the quieter, more residential area, and the Pest side is more action-packed and fast-paced. So depending on what your taste is, that might determine where you want to spend most of your time in Budapest. So the big reason why we we're walking so much today all over this city is because the chain bridge is closed. We've been to only a handful of places twice this year, and both times we've been to Budapest, the chain bridge has been closed. And it's the perfect place to cross from the Buddha side to the Pest side, or vice versa, because it's right in the middle. It's just right around the corner from Parliament. It's directly under Buddha Castle. So hopefully when you're here, not in 2022 or later in 2022, the chain bridge will be open and you won't have to walk so many distances, take so many steps, something like that. You get what I'm trying to say. Since we are so under budget today, what was supposed to be my activity since Trey got to go in the church, we can both do now. I'll share my activity with you, babe. Thank you. You're welcome. It's also a thousand degrees. <laughs> Bad news, guys. They only have round trip. That was gonna be like 14 euros for both of us to go up and then down. So instead, we are gonna pay nothing because they don't do one ways and we're just gonna walk up the hill. Man, you can do Budapest so much cheaper than I even thought you could do. It actually looks like you might wanna sit on the first level because that has the best views going up and going down. So if you do the funicular, you probably wanna get in that first row. Guys, at long last, we have finally made it up to Buda Castle. This site dates back to the 13th century, but the current palace that sits here now was built over a 20 year period in the 1700s. But I think the most important bit of history about this place is that this was the site for Katy Perry's hit music video, Firework. Boom, boom, boom. Even brighter than the moon, moon, moon. Also, a couple dudes on horses just popped up, so I don't know why. Should I ask them? If you want a tour of Buda Castle, there are a variety of tours to choose from. However, they all have a price tag on them. So we're going to avoid that price tag and walking around the grounds is free. So we're gonna do that. So we've seen the two biggest buildings in the Parliament Building and Buda Castle, but we still have two more important buildings that you need to see if you're ever here. And they're a pretty short walk away from Buda Castle. Matthias Church is a Roman Catholic church that has origins back to the 11th century, making it the oldest church in Budapest. The current church began construction in 1255 as the city was being rebuilt after it was raided by the Mongolians in 1241 and 1242. We aren't gonna go in because there's a wedding today, so congrats to the newlyweds. Now, if you're looking for the best viewpoints of Budapest, then look no further than Fisherman's Bastion. It's got beautiful architecture, but the views it provides make it a must visit. All right, guys, there's been a lot more walking today than we expected, so we are a little bit gross. So we're gonna go home and get cleaned up and get ready for a cheap dinner. And we're back. So thus far, we have spent 4,800 Hungarian forints, which is like $11. I'm sorry, guys, I tried so hard on this, but, but 
but go that ahead. just shows how cheap you can do Budapest. Yes. You can do it so affordably. So since we're so under budget, that means that we can kind of ball out for dinner, right? Wrong. Maybe we can keep this under 30 total for both of us. It's gonna be a challenge. Our goal tonight is to get traditional Hungarian food and we are at Drum Cafe. We really lucked out because this menu has a ton of options. They also have langouche, which is what we had earlier, and I completely butchered the name. I'm pumped. That came in like three minutes. That was really fast. That was so fast. So I got the beef goulash with jasmine rice. I've never had goulash. It kind of looks kind of like like a slow cooker stew. And I got the chicken paprika with dumplings. It smells like it should be really spicy. I'm hoping it's not. It smells like it should fire up my mouth though. Let's see. It tastes like it should be spicy, and it smells like it should be spicy, but it's not spicy at all. And there's sour cream on here, so it's a really nice compliment. This is delicious. All right, guys, we did not keep it under $25, but our grand total so far for today is $28. We have done so well. I'm so proud of us. I don't know that we're gonna keep it under 30 for our next stop where we're going to get some beers. Because you can't come to Budapest and not take in its nightlife. This city is known worldwide for its ruin bars. These are formerly buildings that got left to ruin after World War II in the years of the Cold War. But since they've been transformed into this grungy area in the Jewish quarter of the town, this area is best for people like Hannah and I who like to drink beer. According to almost every blog on the internet, the coolest of the ruin bars is a place called Zimpla Kurt. This is so cool. We still kept it under budget because that's what we do. We have spent a grand total of $35 today. You still get to see all of these super cool things and do a lot of trendy stuff. I mean, look at this place. This has been such a fun day, but I'm super excited to go to Serbia. That's where we head to next. This vlog's gonna be chaotic. There's already rain droplets on this camera. And we'll see you in a few days. Oh man. I